Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 150, uh, we'll take a look at the differences between quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis. You can find a listing of all 150 lessons uh, on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. And you can watch the videos embedded within my website or on YouTube as well. A lot of the material I do pull from these two books I wrote with my friend Neil Ford. And today we'll be looking at some material uh, from our book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. I'd like to talk about the difference in this lesson between quantitative and qualitative analysis and how to leverage these two type of analysis techniques within architecture. As a matter of fact, I suppose we should probably start by defining them. <laughs> so quantitative analysis is relating to measuring or measured by the quantity of something rather than its quality. Whereas qualitative analysis is relating to measuring or measured by the quality of something rather than its quantity. What in the world does this mean? <laughs> well, these definitions uh, individually seem clear. Together, it's not very clear how I could use each of these kind of analysis techniques uh, to analyze various aspects of architecture to help me make some architecture decisions. So let's take a look at what each of these two type of analysis techniques mean and how to actually leverage them. What I want to do is go back to lesson 71, I believe it was, uh, where we talked about defining scalability. Now, scalability is the ability for the system to operate as the number of users or requests in the system start to increase over time. Now, that's a standard definition of scalability, but what does it mean for the system to operate? Well, these are things we can actually measure. And this is where quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis both come in. So for example, with scalability, we can measure and see if the performance and responsiveness are impacted as our users grow. Is there an increase in timeouts, perhaps? Or maybe an increase in system crashes? Is there enough database capacity for the projected growth or the growth we're experiencing with increased requests or users? And is there enough virtual machine capacity in terms of threads, memory, and CPU? All of these are factors that determine whether a system is scalable or not. Well, let's take this concept of scalability and let's say that high levels of scalability are critical to the success of our system. We have to be able to scale to fairly high levels of concurrent users. Well, let's do quantitative analysis first. Again, remember that quantitative analysis is relating to measuring or measured by the quantity of something. In other words, it's metrics. And we can actually apply quantitative analysis to our system to be able to actually measure through observability various durations on average, let's say per week, and the number of users we have per week with expected growth rates. And as a matter of fact, we can see through quantitative analysis, numerical analysis using metrics, that as our number of users has been increasing weekly, our response times have on average been within one to two standard deviations from the mean, which shows and demonstrates a fairly scalable system. This is the kind of curve, the kind of graph we do want to see to demonstrate and verify that yes, in fact, our systems are scaling. But what if we don't have metrics? What if they're not available to us? What if we're trying to make decisions about changing something? Or what if we're building a new system? We can't use quantitative analysis to make our decisions in that case because we don't have those metrics. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly where qualitative analysis comes in. Uh, let's solve our scalability problem 
by using qualitative analysis now instead of quantitative. Because remember, qualitative analysis is relating to measuring or measured by the quality of something rather than its quantity. A really good example is the star rating chart that Neil Ford and I created in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. And as a matter of fact, uh, you can see and actually download uh, this star rating chart uh, from my website, developer2architect.com slash downloads slash worksheets.html. And the link is also in the landing page uh, for this lesson as well. But we can leverage these star ratings to determine what sort of architectures really might support those high levels of scalability. As a matter of fact, uh, let's do this qualitative analysis. What we're concerned about here is scalability out of all of these architecture characteristics. Qualitatively, we notice that monolithic architectures don't scale well. Now we can certainly scale a layered modular monolith or microkernel. Uh, but when we scale that single deployment unit, first of all, all of that functionality must scale. So it's not cost effective and it takes a long time to start up multiple instances of our single application. And so therefore we notice we rated these as one star. As we move over to service-based and service-oriented architecture in a distributed architecture, we notice Yes, we put three stars there for scalability. They do scale, but not as well as microservices, event-driven, or even space-based architecture. So notice, we're not using metrics. We're not using quantitative analysis, but rather the quality of that characteristic is fairly low here and fairly high over here which drives us towards our choices of possibly using microservices, event-driven, or even space-based, which have much better levels of scalability. Now, this is a great example of qualitative analysis. As a matter of fact, uh, let me show you another one. <clears throat> In the second to last, I think it actually might have been the last chapter of our book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts, uh, we talk about putting all these three primary or primal forces together uh, to form transactional sagas. A transactional saga can be thought of as a way to construct a distributed architecture using these three primal forces. And those three are consistency, whether we're striving for atomic transactions or eventual consistency. Communication, whether our communication is synchronous or asynchronous. And finally, the coordination, whether it's orchestrated or choreographed. Now, using these three, we can now do qualitative analysis because our concern is scalability. If we look, we see that we've got different levels, qualitative-wise, of scalability within the transactional sagas. As a matter of fact, over here we see green within the fairy tale saga, the parallel saga, time travel, and anthology. But as a matter of fact, if we look, we can see the comparative analysis. If we were to try to use the horror story, please don't use that one. That's why Neil Ford and I named it the horror story saga. <laughs> but also, if we're forced into atomic transactions that are synchronous and orchestrated, we notice our scalability is probably the least out of all of these types of transactional sagas. And so here we can start to drive our decisions about what levels of scalability we need and how it compares qualitatively to other techniques of building that distributed architecture. And we find, of course, that the anthology saga, which is eventual consistency, asynchronous, and choreographed, does offer the best level of scalability, separate from metrics. Because a lot of times we need to make these decisions when, in fact, we don't have those metrics. So this was kind of an explanation and an introduction between these two types of analysis techniques, both quantitative and qualitative to not only help us make a decision, uh, but also to help justify or validate that particular decision.
Most of the time, quantitative analysis is used for comparison, but also to verify or demonstrate that we either are successful or are having a problem. Versus qualitative is more that analysis when we don't have those metrics and we need to do comparisons about the quality of things. And so hopefully this arms you now with two different kinds or two additional kinds of analysis techniques that we can use to help us make decisions as a software architect. So this has been one lesson 150 150 of them so far, <laughs> uh, quantitative versus qualitative analysis. Stay tuned in two more weeks for lesson 151, yet another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.